Siyempre, alam mo naman, yung construction sa Pilipinas, especially on roadworks, napakainit na topic. Well, yung karsada natin is designed to transfer the load that uh, it's carrying to the soil. Yo, what's up guys? Good morning. I'm Engineer Andro and this is Daily Dose of Construction. The picture you just saw, ang arte. <laughs> yung, picture na, yung picture na nakita nyo ngayon, ngayon lang eh. Ito ay picture ng isang uh, road na under construction sa Batangas. At uh, pinagkaguluhan to ng mga netizens, uh, engineers, even uh, non-engineers. Pinagkaguluhan nila, syempre alam mo naman, yung construction sa Pilipinas, especially on roadworks. Napakainit na topic, napakainit na na bagay sa Pilipinas dahil uh, sabi nila sabi ng iba ito yung isa sa medium of corruption in Philippines now me as a civil engineer ipapaliwanag ko sa inyo ano ba yung mga factors at ano ba yung engineering behind the uh, roadworks and let's start ang unang unang dapat mong alamin in roadworks is to know the volume or yung dami ng sasakyan na dumadaan in a given time it is the process of conducting ADT or yung average uh, daily traffic on a certain area of course it varies uh, from time to time for example uh, rush hour or uh, tanghaling tapat another thing is yung lugar kung nasan yung road diba? Uh, kung nasa EDSA ka asahan mo yung traffic doon is napaka heavy diba? Uh, yeah. if you're in uh, a barangay road Less volume of vehicle, right? Uh, ano pa ba? Sa SLEX, gano'ng kabilis at gano'ng kadami ang sasakyan na dumadaan in a given time. ba diba? Napakadami. So from those example, it's pretty evident na yung volume ng traffic uh, varies uh, on its location. Ngayon, pag nalaman mo na yung dami ng sasakyan at yung uh, daloy ng traffic sa isang uh, road, Ma-assume mo yung weight or yung load na binubuhat ng road which is the first thing to consider in designing ano yung bigat at uh, gaano ka frequent yung bigat na na-encounter ng isang structure the next thing to consider is yung location ng uh, karsada na gagawin mo or yung highway na gagawin mo isang magandang example dyan is may road sa tabi ng dagat may roads sa kabundukan may roads na sa mga area that is a catch basin na kapag umulan ay babaha Meron tayong skyway, meron tayong expressways. Napakadaming iba't ibang klase ng roads at uh, nakadepende yan sa kung saan lugar at uh, kung anong gamit natin. Ngayon kung alam na natin yung uh, ADT ng isang lugar at alam na natin kung saan siya nakalocate, makakapag-design na tayo ng roads. Bakit ko nga ba sinabi na mahalaga yung lokasyon ng road o yung kakayahan ng lupa na buhatin yung daan o yung road na ginagawa mo. Tawag doon is yung soil bearing capacity. Ano namang kinalaman nun? Sa roads or sa paggawa ng karsada. Well, yung karsada natin is designed to transfer the load that uh, it's carrying to the soil. From the axle of a certain vehicle down to the concrete, yung concrete, ipapasa lang na sa lupa. So, malino ba tayo doon? There are two types of uh, road pavement. One is yung flexible, two ay yung rigid. Itong dalawang design na to nakadepende kung ano yung actual scenario sa area na magtalalagay tayo ng road. Na magtalalagay tayo ng road. Yun yung dahilan kung bakit inexplain ko prior to designing yung traffic at yung location. Okay, from their names, malalaman natin kung ano pinagkaiba nilang dalawa. So, unahin natin yung flexible pavement. Kaya siya tinawag na flexible pavement. It works by putting a flexible surface on the top of the road. Para yung load ng sasakyan na itatransfer mo sa lupa ay mababawasan. Dahil yung partial part ng load ay na-reflect na or na-reject na, 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 na or na-lessen na nung flexible surface mo kaya sa flexible pavement naglalagay tayo ng asphalt overlay which is flexible enough to resist the load that is coming from the car 
Ngayon, sa rigid pavement naman, from its word rigid, gumagamit ka ng rigid material to carry such load. Kaya konkreto ang ginagamit natin dahil alam naman natin ang konkreto ay napakalakas pagdating sa compression. So yung strength ng concrete will resist the load that is coming from the wheels. Ngayon sa rigid pavement, babalik na naman tayo sa volume ng traffic at sa area kung saan ka nakalocate. Why? Kasi dahil rigidity nga, yung pinag-uusapan natin, yung strength ng concrete na i-design mo varies on the volume of traffic and the strength of the soil that is carrying the whole load. Kung less traffic and you have stronger soil, okay na yung pure concrete lang with dowels. Now on the other hand, if the volume of traffic is high and strength of the soil is weak, kahit purely compression lang yung pinag-uusapan natin in terms of roadworks, nagkakaroon pa rin tayo ng reinforced concrete which is yung sa picture na nagtrending is a, is a good example at this point alam na natin yung two kinds of pavement so pag-usapan naman natin yung preparation na ginagawa on constructing these roads mapa-rigid pavement man yan or mapa-flexible pavement yung preparation bago i-overlay itong mga pavement na to ay consist of three layers subgrade sub base at yung base now ano ba itong mga to ito yung mga dinurog na puso oh ito yung God! mga dinurog na bato or yung aggregates na ini-spread that uh, ino-overlay prior to putting our pavement ngayon kasing halaga siya ng pavement na nilalagay natin why? kasi sabi ko nga yung reaction ng roads is just from the wheel of the vehicle to the pavement tapos yung pavement transfer lang niya sa soil Ganon kahalaga yung layering na yan. At minsan, iisipin natin, buhangin lang naman yan or aggregates lang naman yan. Hindi yan ganon ka-critical. Hindi yan ganon kahalaga. Well, para sabihin ko sa inyo, kadalasan or majority ng cracks na na-encounter natin sa roads, mapa-asphalt man yan or mapa-rigid uh, pavement or mapa-concreto man yan, yung mga cracks, especially yung longitudinal cracks na na-encounter na na at nakikita nyo sa daan, yun ay nanggagaling sa poor preparation of uh, sub-base hindi kasi maganda yung preparation mo ng tatlong layers na yon. magkakaroon na yung problema it's either settlement or something hihina yung pundasyon ng road mo at syempre magkakaroon ng reaction magkakaroon ng crack sa roads ngayon paano ko naman malalaman kung poor or in good quality ba yung materyales na dadalhin or gagamitin ko sa road works pangalawa, paano ko may ensure na upon spreading of these layers ay eh, mamimit ko yung quality at yung compaction na required on the given project. The answer is, before we order or before we use a certain material, base course man yan or kahit anong course, main course man yan o golf course man yan, <laughs> kahit, anong, kahit anong bagay na dadalhin mo sa site, it should be, it should be checked through CBR or the California Bearing Ratio, which is, it will test the composition of the material and upon spreading this material once you have proven that it is as per standard we will conduct an FDT or field density test to check the compaction level of the layers that you have spread out so pag na-insure mo yung quality na yun that's almost good enough for your road to be strong and to sustain its function Ngayong na-explain ko na yung few things to consider on uh, roadworks. Pag-usapan naman natin yung nagtrending na picture. Base sa in-explain ko sa inyo ng things to consider in uh, roads. Ngayon, siguro alam nyo na yung sagot na dapat check nyo muna gano'ng kadami ba yung vehicle na dumadaan sa road na yon. Posible yung road na yon, sabihin na natin kaunting sasakyan lang yung dumadaan compared sa mga matatraffic na area or yung sa town proper na madaming sasakyan. Pero posible Uh, may mga heavy vehicles na dumadaan doon dahil alam naman natin sa Batangas maraming quarry sites at uh, merong pier kung saan may mga trailer trucks na nanggagaling so it could be one of the reason I don't know at uh, posible rin naman na hindi kaya ma-withstand yung load because the soil is weak so we are putting reinforcement just in case settlement happen meron tayong reinforcement sa, sa pavement natin for tension so that's one of the reasons Or should I say justification on the design? 
Ngayon, ano ba ang pinaglalaban ko? Ano ba yung nag-trigger sa akin na gawin tong video to? At uh, explain sa inyo yung brief and uh, short and uh, counting counting knowledge about roadworks. Kasi kasi I want to enlighten I want to enlighten you guys. I want to enlighten people who are too toxic at uh, sobrang makapo na na akala mo hindi sila nagkakamali or akala mo napakagaling nilang tao. Sana sa mga bagay na sinabi ko, na nalaman nyo at uh, na-educate kayo na hindi kailangan lahat ng roads may bakal. Hindi ibig sabihin substandard yung uh, paggawa or tinipid yung project kapag walang bakal. Hindi porket ganito kaganda yung preparation at yung paglalatag ng bakal ay maganda na to. Sometimes it is over design and sometimes it's a waste of money and sometimes it is the right thing to do. At isa pa, although hindi naman ako engineer from government, honestly hindi pa ako nakapagtrabaho sa gobyerno when when I'm in the Philippines. Pero as an engineer somehow I feel I feel sad for uh, for the engineers of DPWH kasi sila lagi yung sumasalo ng sise. Especially I have friends and I have uh, acquaintances that is working in DPWH. At for your information, hindi lahat ng uh, roadworks ay sakop or uh, under ng uh, DPWH or should or should I say hindi lahat ng roadworks ay may full authority ang DPWH. National highways lang yung may full control at authority ang DPWH with res uh, with with regards to funding, planning and everything. Yung mga maliliit na roads, barangay roads, town proper, etc and other uh, and other roads that connect uh, adjacent barangays and everything remote areas those roads are funded and requested by LGUs binabato lang nila yun sa DPWH kasi nandun nga yung mga engineers to design and to plan and to cost uh, to, to analyze the cost of the project at para sa akin none of us have the right to judge or to tell whether which is right or wrong. Hindi natin pwedeng sabihin na kinurakot yan, overdesign yan. Hindi natin pwedeng sabihin na bakit ganyan, ano bang meron dyan. Especially those engineers na nagre-react violently on, uh, on the picture. Unang-una, wala tayong sapat na proof, wala tayong sapat na ebidensya. Hindi natin alam yung senaryo, hindi, hindi natin alam yung mga parameters na kinakaharap ng engineer na in charge sa picture na yan. We engineers do not guess. Tayo mga engineer, uh, we analyze things based on the facts and the datas na nakokolect natin through testing or through research. And for this mere picture lang, at isa ka sa nagre-react, aba, Engineer, uh, let's let's work out our profession. Wag tayong padalos-dalos, wag tayong makisabay sa mga cancer ng net is, ng, ng ng internet. Sorry if I offend you, but uh, let's just spread kindness to others. At para sa mga netizens naman, first of all, alamin niyo muna yung proseso. There's there there are so much thing to learn and for you to know about before you can say something. Again, hindi ako galit pero Huwag tayong magmagaling. Huwag tayong magmagaling sa social media. Do, do some research and mag-youtube na lang kayo. Lamang at maraming salamat. God bless you all. Fearless.